Hello, I hope this video finds you well. Tonight we are going to look at and other from strings 2, and this is the Python solution. The prompt states, given two strings, return true if either of the strings appear at the very end of the other string, ignoring upper and lower case differences. In other words, computation should not be case sensitive. And it gives this little note here that s.lower returns a lowercase version of a string. We can look at the first example here, hi abc and abc, and it returns true because we see the last three characters of the larger string match the three characters of the smaller string. In the second case, they're showing, the case in, showing how it's not case sensitive because even though the smaller string is capital A, small b, capital C, and the end of the large string is A, capital B, C, we still get true. And in the final case, we see that the smaller string is ABC and the end is ABC, and so we get true. So this problem is really checking to see are you comfortable working with substrings and relating those substrings to the length values and using some built-in methods. So the first thing we want to do with this problem is I want to take A, and I want to say A is equal to A dot lower. And so what this does is it takes A and it converts it to lowercase, B is equal to B dot lower. So I've converted both A and B to lowercase. And I'm going to have to establish between them which is the smaller string because, and which is the larger string. Because you notice here, in this case, we have the large string as parameter A and the small string as parameter B. And in the second case, they're reversed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to assume that the large is A and I'm going to assume that the small is B. And I don't need a semicolon there. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to say if if len of a is less than length of b, meaning is a smaller than b, that means that a is going to equal small is going to equal a, and large is going to equal b. So I just swap them. So now let's think about our substring situation here. So our substring situation is we want to check if the to, if, this, if the small string appears at the end of the other string. Okay, so how do I do this? Well, let's take this concrete example. So I have high ABC, which is my large, and I have ABC, which is my small, and you'll notice that I've already made the lowercase. And so what's the check going to be? Well, the check is going to be part of the large string, and in this case, it's going to be the large string from index 2 to index 5. That's inclusive, exclusive. And I feel good about this because 5 minus 2 is 3, which is the length of the smaller string. And that's okay, but the question then comes is, how do I generalize this? And we can see, actually, I've already written this question down here. So how do I generalize this based on the length of the small and large string? Well, interestingly, this is the length of the large string. So it is large at something length of large. And now, how does 2 relate to the length of the small and large? And we see that if we take the large minus the small, we get that value. So if I take the large, or the length of the large, minus the length of the small, then I'm going to get that value there. So let's test this. So what we're going to do is we're going to make this variable called check. And check is going to be the large string, and it's going to be from the length of large minus the length of the small, colon, the length of the large. And now I just have to check if check is equivalent to small, then we return true. Well, capital T, wrong language, otherwise we return false. And we get go, and there it is. So again, this is in strings too, but it doesn't include loops, but it highlights a lot of really nice, a nice idea around using methods and kind of using our conditional statements. Now let's just tighten this up a little bit because we can. Again, I notice that this conditional statement returns true if it's true and false if it's false. So I'm going to change this just to be a straight up return here. And I'm going to get rid of those. So basically, I'm just going to evaluate the Boolean expression, return it. And that works fine as well. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Have a wonderful day.